Now you need a device here. Right? Okay, okay, thank you. This go uh, forward. Forward okay. and backward. Forward and backward. Pointer line or this is okay. So you're back. Wait. Pleasure. Do you see Professor Professor Kudala from the University of Federal University of Janeiro? You talk as a referral you mentioned about something rather recent, two years maybe now? Two years. Two years, right? Completed. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much for the uh, opportunity to talk. But personally, I'm not so happy for this talk because this is nothing to physics I want to talk. And uh, my friend Gaston uh, invited me and uh, he prohibited to for me to speak physics. That's, yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's in, uh, in Brazilian expression of my Spanish, uh, muy amigo. <laughs> He's a very good friend. <laughs> okay, so I'll talk about the, uh, this National Institute of Science and Technology and uh, one branch of the nuclear physics and applications. And this project is uh, one of the uh, largest scientific project in the, the Ministry of Science and Technology. And uh, according to the official page, uh, the definition is written, of course, in Portuguese here, so don't worry, I, I try to translate. So this part is a definition of the National Institute of Science and Technology. And it's very similar to the cipher in the sense of the, uh, 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 the network of the science and for the formation of the human resources, but in the scale of the, uh, in some specified area and uh, in, within Brazil. So, so aggregate in articulated way the best research groups acting in the frontiers of the science and in the area of the strategic themes of the sustaining development of the company, the, the country. The give impulse to the basic and the fundamental science to be internationally competitive, stimulate development of the cutting edge science, scientific and the te technological research associated with application for promoting innovations and the entrepreneurial spirit. And uh, the other part is in practice what should be done, uh, the formation of research network and consolidation of the partnership and uh, et cetera. Okay, so this is uh, 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 the concept of the ENCT. And uh, there are lots of ENCTs in various area of science. And uh, this part here is a, uh, uh, exact science, I mean uh, uh, basic uh, science here, and the engineers in agriculture, biologists, uh, health, and uh, human and social applications. And our project is uh, uh, located here, but that necessarily means that our project is at top, so it's uh, by chance it came to the, in the first point. And uh, uh, this project is in cooperation with the government, federal government and the state uh, government foundations. So unfortunately, at this moment, Rio de Janeiro is in a very difficult situation. So uh, I will show you uh, what is the real situation here. But anyway, what we have to do within this project is activate the communications among groups, because these groups are never communicated just only by uh, personal collaborations, or once a year, some general assembly of the, the physics, physical society, but we never communicate, uh, never. So this may be a good chance to consolidate some uh, uh, scientific uh, community 
And then, uh, so to do that, we need to uh, make promote the workshop and symposium and estimate exchanges among researchers, and et cetera. So the first step we have started is the com pa uh, part of the communications among the groups. And uh, this is done by, excuse me, I forgot to say. So on this part, and think of next generation. This is a, a important part. And the project is in the period of 2017 because the, the, the first payment was in November of 2016. So in practice, it started 2017. And it went, uh, goes to the 2022. And so we have to do it within this one. And if we succeed, we may have possibility to propose a new proposal as a community, and that's what we have to do. In conclusion, I have to go. Okay, so, oh, what's that? So this communication, first thing we have, we did is to start up the the, the uh, homepage of the group, and this homepage is, uh, uh, as you see, uh, many things in the Portuguese, and also you can see the English part. And the location, I didn't show it at Raji, but uh, I will tell you later. And uh, there are lots of groups, and these photographs, the uh, images, are those uh, related to the, the groups, activity of the members of the group, the, or the institute. And this project started actually from this uh, uh, Guy, probably some of you know the, the very competent uh, nuclear physicist, experimental physicist, Paulo Roberto Gomes. And he, he started to accept this challenge and uh, then mount the project. And uh, then just after the project approved, he passed away while he was attending the meeting in Italy. So the question is, the project was already approved, and uh, I was the vice, his vice uh, uh, director, coordinator, so I have to accept this task, otherwise the project will go on, because in Rio de Janeiro, I was the only one who can proceed with the project because of the, some uh, stupid uh, uh, restrictions. So, and uh, some people, uh, so this project is for this reason uh, dedicated to the, the uh, Paulo Gomes. And then uh, in this page, you can see lots of uh, subject, the members of the, uh, the ANCT dues, the, the, the involved. And the one is, eh? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> if virtual, probably, yes. So this is archaeology. Yeah. Basically, the uh, uh, nuclear chronology using the uh, accelerated mass spectroscopy, the carbon-14 and the other things, and there are lots of activities there. So. For example, this one is a nice photo to really to investigate the, uh, this Einstein is playing the Stradivarius or not. So this is one thing. And this is also in, uh, uh, in the field of the bio biological things, oceanography, and uh, this, is, this is also the wrong thing in the nuclear physics but it's a nuclear energy here. And uh, this is an uh, interaction of uh, hadrons and uh, QGP. And uh, this is a uh, nuclear uh, astrophysics. And this is a kind of uh, astroparticle physics using the, the Earth as a detector. It's kind of OJ or even other things, neutrinos. And maybe some theoretical people are also working the origin of the, uh, the universe and the QCD and uh, uh, it's all other. And some people are also working the medicine, uh, physical. Excuse me? 
Yes? Ah, okay. And also the traditional nuclear physics uh, structure and reactions, and also extend to the nuclear astrophysics. So there are several lines and uh, several groups uh, are already interacting in some sense, but not in the whole group. So this ge geographic distribution, as you see here, these points, I cannot, it doesn't work. Oh, it's working? Yeah, okay. So these points, uh, where the institutes there, and the number you cannot read probably, but some numbers uh, there are institutions. And these two, this is some power and this is Rio de Janeiro, and 14 and 10. And some uh, uh, south in Santa Catarina, and also some institutions are, uh, are participating. So this uh, is the, uh, the network we would like to really activate. So this is more or less the size of this, the institute. The, the 35 institutions, 100 and maybe 35 faculty members. And this number I really don't know because I, I'm a little ashamed to, to, to say that because we, I, I don't still capture the size of the whole group with respect to the students and the postdocs at this time. And uh, three distinct several years, I mean uh, uh, nuclear structure and reactions, and, and hadronic and uh, QCD physics, and uh, nuclear applications. So these three areas are uh, basically, uh, some people are working in both areas, but um, uh, three areas almost uh, very small overlap in, in between at this moment. So the structure of the institute is, uh, this is uh, maybe just for you to know, the steering committee uh, uh, formed by seven researchers from the beginning of the project. And then uh, uh, the coordinations, uh, working the, all the members of the, uh, the headquarter of the project, which is a university, Federal University of Fluminense in Niteroi. And uh, exactly for the sake of the uh, international visibility, I try to introduce as much as uh, internationally active and uh, very, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, experiment, experienced uh, researchers in, in three areas. And uh, these are uh, members of the International Advisory Committee who accepted kindly to accompany our activity in some sense. And uh, we are talking about the Germany, collaboration with Germany. So there are the German people here. So maybe you know all of them, I guess. <laughs> and so they are the member of the International Advisory Committee. And uh, the, the more or less the composition of this is uh, high energy and the nuclear physics is purely, almost purely theoreticians, which is uh, more or less half of the, the number in number. And 20% uh, is uh, nu uh, the traditional nuclear physics and application, uh, the reactions, and the people in applying more basically in application. But these are just a rough estimate, and maybe this may be 25 or or this may be 40, and this may be a little bit small. So, but more or less like this. And here, the number of the, uh, the students formed within the two years, 2017 and 2018, where the project started, this is 20 masters in the area of theoretical physics, and this is 10 in the nuclear structure and reactions, and this is uh, 15 in the application, and uh, this is a doctor, 20, uh, 27. So this is more or less proportional to the number of the, the faculty members. So. Plus sign, 13 hmm? plus 7. 13 is 2017, 
Uh, this, this, this is uh, for 2017, the first number. The second number is uh, 2018. Okay. So, okay, the, uh, uh, the number of publications in uh, indexed uh, the magazine, uh, this is also more or less represents the number of people. But of course, there are a number of collaborations, so uh, we have to uh, discount the, the, these numbers here. But anyhow, that just for you to have an idea. So if you go to the page, you can see the, what kind of publications are, are done. And this is, uh, 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 we decided to put the most recent publications when people publish the paper and just inform us and immediately under. Immediately means in a Brazilian scale, so not. <laughs> immediate means one week is all immediate. And uh, maybe one week or two weeks. And it appears on the page, uh, the new publications uh, in separated areas and you can see the uh, histories also. When do you go to here, uh, scientific publications somewhere, uh, science, scientific production, you can go there, then you can see the whole the <coughs> publication list. <coughs> okay, so this is what we did to start to make the, the communications among the groups using through the, the page and uh, intercommunications, noti uh, notifications, and, and also we use it for the calls for their uh, scholarships and also the how to pay their trips, uh, something. And the next part is this one. Workshops, symposiums, stimuli exchange among researchers and the students gain international visibility and the insertion. OK, this part, it's a hard task. And it naturally requires money, too. And uh, we have to do it within this period. And uh, here. So in 2017, 2018, the last, last year, we did several things here. So first thing we did is the money we received were too small. I'll show you how, how small. Then we have to ask all the experimental groups to renormalize the original project. And then we try to, to solve this uh, emergency problem one by one. And several, the, the uh, scholarships and postdocs and uh, uh, events and uh, uh, supports for the, uh, the young researchers to participate in the conference or the, the collaboration program. And the first symposium of the, uh, the whole group was done in the last year in uh, using the uh, Brazilian Physical Society meeting. And uh, we, we had uh, four foreign members of the International Advisory Committee uh, give a talk of the, to introduce uh, some new informations of the activities. Okay, so this is the real situation here. So this is the amount of the original project in real. I mean, uh, maybe you can divide by, I think, three point something, four, four. to convert in Dora. So maybe just uh, one million and a little bit more for the permanent materials, so equipments, and this is operational general cost, and this is three, three millions, went down to the two. And the scholarship is interestingly, we didn't ask something, and they added for us more than we asked. Okay. So this is a very clear thing, and this one is the really uh, already we received every, everything, of course, we didn't use the, all the scholarship. Otherwise, we cannot continue to the six years, four years. 
And this is uh, the money we received. So I mean, from the original project, this is uh, just 20%, uh, 25% something. And this is the same. And we, uh, uh, during two years, we almost uh, 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 used, applied this money ineffectively. And this is uh, the, the uh, final balance today, for example, in January. And the scholarship, we still have some, some money that we can open some postdocs. Uh, and uh, we discussed to, to, to open some calls for the, the postdocs. Actually, we converted all the, the graduate student uh, scholarship to the postdoc students because graduates, uh, undergraduate or graduate <laughs> scholarship it's usually supported by each university and each institutions. And if not supported, that means the candidate is not so excellent. So that means we, we thought that we cannot uh, support some uh, uh, undergraduate or, or graduate students. Okay. So the next step <coughs> within the, the, uh, the what we can do is to uh, organize the uh, symposium, uh, which will be, which will take place in the May 27 to 30, and over the general scope is the overview of the Brazilian nuclear physics application community and uh, its application on nuclear physics research activities in Brazil. That is really I need because of this uh, lack of the communication, even with uh, the, our effort to the, the construction of home page, still our communication is uh, not so smooth. So we hope that uh, this kind of, uh, how do you say, the uh, uh, overview of the activities and also the critical analysis of the present accomplishment and the international visibility and uh, all these things. And then uh, we, we, we should hear some reports of physical, physics, interesting cutting edge scientific object from, the, from abroad. And then establish some strategy of the coming uh, decades. So this is uh, the basic general scope of this symposium we, we are planning to do. So general structure is uh, something within the time of four days, 12 colloquium style of uh, review talks of the very promising uh, physical subject within our area. And then uh, uh, the kind of other, other talks is a, uh, uh, analysis of a present structure of our community, the how many students and how many groups are working in this region. And finally, it should converge to the, uh, the acquisition of the, some white papers. And the invited speakers uh, already accepted. And uh, there are the names here. So, so they will give uh, uh, interesting talks. And uh, maybe you can see here the German participations, OK? And uh, Paolo uh, promi promised me that he tried to come maximal uh, priority, according to him. But uh, if he cannot, he will send some uh, uh, representative to talk about the, uh, the, uh, the GSI project, the physics. OK. So. Perspectives and long-term plan. The question is, we can do this uh, within this limited budget or not? And I think we can. Something we have to continue. And uh, the situation in Brazil, political situation, is very unpredictable at this moment, and especially the uh, state of the Rio de Janeiro. And so I don't know what will happen for the the money that our Rio de Janeiro state 
always for us, but. Uh, I think you missed uh, one important. Yeah, sorry. Half of the money is federal and half is. The state. Ah, sorry. Yeah. Okay. It's almost half and a half. Go back. Oops. Go back to this. Okay, as Gaston said, this is a total money of the project, and the half of them, for example, this one, one million two, and this is from the federal agency already paid for us, and the rest was uh, one million and uh, maybe four four hundred something, is a part of the state government, real state by government, and nothing still. Paid zero, zero paid, and here we had some part paid, and still the uh, CNPQ or the uh, federal agency still may pay some uh, 400 from this one, and then the rest is due for the uh, the federal the, the state. state government. And uh, they, uh, they already paid uh, 120 years, I mean, just a 10% of this uh, that the, the, they had to pay is uh, uh, paid for us in the form of, uh, as a kind of a scholarship for the, for, for the coordinators. <laughs> so it's a way to, they found a way to pay something uh, uh, to give some support for us. Okay, so the situation is very unpredictable, but still we have a hope, according to the conversation with the, uh, the, uh, the president of the agency of Rio de Janeiro, he said that we still have some hope to complete the payment during the period, I mean, before 2022. Okay. The one point I have to uh, stress is that this program is lacking for the uh, participation of the experimental group in uh, high energy nuclear collisions. And uh, this part is really a high energy part or QGP or QCD, all the theoreticians, as I, I mentioned. So at least we need some experimental physics uh, should be included in our activity. Otherwise, something very peculiar. So we have to continue. And uh, also, uh, the point already uh, mentioned in Krauss talk and the recent development in high energy nuclear astrophysics opened a new window in the nuclear physics in the more general aspects. So, going to this uh, very beautiful declaration of the, uh, the formation of the UNCT or the National Institute, and there is a part, it is this part, oh, no, no, it doesn't come. Something here? Okay. This part is how to promote innovations and the entrepreneurial spirit. And uh, what shall we do for our nuclear physics? And this part is a real uh, heavy, uh, how to say, home task that we have to do within the rest of the four, four years. Still, uh, we are looking for how to do that. Okay, to conclude. <laughs> We should converge to, anyhow, if possible, to respond to such a question with the thorough thoughts and the common desire of the nuclear community, a proper Brazilian project for the next decade. So this is my personal conclusion, and I don't know how to do it, and this is a kind of a mission impossible, and certainly this is Oops, this is not me. <laughs> it should be younger generations. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know, I don't want to comment on them now, but uh, for example, you. <laughs> okay, and thank you very much for, for your attention, and I'm sorry for <laughs> this very clumsy talk. How do 
you share among the institutions? How, how does this? Till now, we supported uh, maybe four, four or five postdocs, but for the just same agency, like. Uh, uh, because I have a postdoc position, but my, my doctor finished, and we, I need uh, two months. And such a thing we try to pay with uh, some priority that we, we, we use. But now we are planning to use more real postdoc and uh, the two fix to the some group and uh, pro real project for the two years, for example, one year plus one, one year. And uh, then uh, uh, the steering committee should select the quality and uh, the, the possibility, how do you say? Uh, uh. And uh, we also ask some international advisory committee if we, we, we are a little compromising, then we can ask the uh, international Then this would work like a, an open call yes, for, yes, the, for yes. the members of, uh, of the National At least the, uh, the, uh, the group should be in the, uh, in the, national, in the national. Otherwise, uh, CNPQ doesn't permit. Okay. But anyone who wants to enter to this community, just send us a meeting. <laughs> to include the, uh, the, uh, the new member is not so difficult. So if you have an institution, for example, that is part of that, there is there is one uh, contact person for the for that institution. Yes, yeah, it is written in a page. Okay. Yeah, I think for the visitors, there's an interesting point that's been pointed out as well. First, it is dominated by theorists, right? Yes. This is in high energy. Yes. And we lack experimentalists, so this is probably a point for this afternoon for the round table. Yeah. We had discussion, and now we have fair people. Part yes, of people. exactly. Uh, we had discussion, similar discussions. Do you have some other people? How do you actually promote experimental groups? Exactly. The field, the yes. In Brazil. Yeah. So this would be something maybe we have our guests can give input. Uh, can you show the, uh, the timeline, the duration of the project? Yes. We have, well, uh, the, uh, uh, the how to manage the, uh, the activity during the time is uh, completely free, we can do. Right. Yeah, and so, uh, but we have to make a report, partial report in each two years or something. And if really approved, we have another uh, six years and even at this moment, we can, how do you say, uh, ask more something concrete project if we really have, uh, how do you say, the plausible project and the really community is known to be a very solid, then uh, we may have a possibility to have the project like that. But that is uh, theoretical thinking. You want also to attract postdocs from abroad, right? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Comments? Okay. Okay, well, I just uh, thank Takeshi once more. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to show the University of Sao Paulo. Who's going to tell us if we have changes? Alô? Tá. E aqui, peraí. Qual que é o.
Tá. O laser. O laser é o primeiro. Esse é o artefato. Tá, ok. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for the invitation to present something which is not much of interest to most of you because <laughs> it is the activity uh, in nuclear experimental nuclear physics in Sao Paulo, but uh, it has nothing to do with Panda physics. So, but maybe it has something to do with NUSTAR and uh, R3B. We are in this R3B project in NUSTAR. Uh, well, this is the out, I have to go a bit, a bit further. This is the outline of my talk. Uh, first of all, I will show some uh, challenging properties of nuclei far from stability valley in order to show that it is something very interesting. It's a, one of the forefronts of nuclear physics. I will speak about production methods. I will show there is a large effort in investments in new accelerator facilities. And then I will speak about our facility and its results. Uh, well, the experimental evidence for the interest in these nuclei far from the stability began in 85. Uh, this was a FISREV letters by Tanihata and the group. These were matter, uh, root mean squared matter radius measurements of uh, different isotopes, lithium and helium and beryllium isotopes. Uh, the measurement were realized at LBL Bevalac. And here you have the mass of the ion, and here you have the root mean squared matter radius. And what you see, for instance, for lithium, this is 6, 7, which are the stable, 8, 9, which are radioactive, and then 11. And there is a very sharp increase in the radius. Uh, also for the helium, this is the alpha particle, and this is helium uh, 6. And again, there is a sharp increase in the radius. So they determined uh, the radius to be around 3.27 Fermi when the stable and the, the not exotic ones had a radius around 2.5. Well, other very interesting measurements followed by Kobayashi. This was in 88, published. Uh, what they measured was they made the breakup of lithium-11 on a carbon target. Lithium-11 breaks into a nine lithium core and two neutrons. And what they measured was the momentum distribution of lithium-9. Of lithium Here is the figure. This is the cross-section of these uh, uh, processus as a function of the momentum, the perpendicular momentum. And what you see, there are, uh, the distribution is centered in zero, and you have two widths, a very large width distribution and a narrow width. And then using the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, you can say that a large width delta P distribution corresponds to a small delta R. The small width distribution corresponds to a large delta R. This is supposed to be the core lithium-9, and this is due to the two neutrons. And then they determined from the width of the delta P distribution, the radial distribution of the two components of the of the nucleus. And then the lithium-9 is around the reduced space, and the two neutrons occupy a large space, which is equivalent to the lead-208. So you have two neutrons quite far from the, from the core. And when you calculate the average of these two, you arrive to the same radius you measured by other, completely other method. Uh, here you see, well, then, just go back, this was the beginning of the discovery of the halo nuclei. So this is completely different from the hypothesis 
where it is supposed that the nucleus, the whole nucleus has a constant density, very high density compact object. And these halo nuclei uh, then began the study. And here you see that there are not only one, the lithium-11, but there are many halo nuclei. These are proton halo nuclei, and these are neutron halo nuclei. Well, here is a nuclear landscape, which was already shown. These are the stable nuclei, the black. These are the known nuclei. And then there is a large region, which is not well known, and which is called terra incognita. And here you see, as a function of the years, how the number of, of discovered um, nuclei increases. Again, uh, I just want to point out that in, in the area of nuclear structure and dynamics research, one of the forefronts is the study of the exotic nuclei. What we call exotic nuclei, these are the nuclei which are close to the drip line, have very low binding energies, have very short half-life, and very strange properties, halo, skin, change in shell structure, and so on. And here the color shows the decrease in the half-life of the nuclei. So all the yellows have a half-life smaller than 10 minutes. And then you can go further and further. Uh, the lithium-11 and also the helium-6, they are called three-body Borromean system. Borromean means that every two-body uh, part of this, of this system is unbound. For instance, lithium-9 plus one neutron, which would be a lithium-10, is unbound. Two neutrons are unbound. But the three-body, the lithium-9 plus two neutrons is bound, and the two neutron interaction which bounds the lithium-11. Also, the magic numbers change close to the drip lines. Here we see that N equal 28 is a, a, is, a, is a closed shell because the excitation energy of the first excited state for the calcium isotopes is very high for this number. It does not happen for silicon and sulfur, which are, uh, when they have 28 neutrons, they are close to the drip line. Here also, so it, 28 is not anymore a good uh, magic number for close to the drip line. Here it is the oxygen uh, isotopes as a function of neutron number. And you see that oxygen 24 is magical. It has Z equal 8 and N equal 16. So from 20, it changes to 16 close to the drip line. Well, production methods, the main uh, methods which are used in high energy accelerators are the projectile fragmentation and the ISOL method. The projectile fragmentation means a heavy ion accelerator produces a heavy ion with high energy. There is a thin production target and the projectile breaks in many pieces. And then a fragment separator separates the different pieces, the re different radioactive ion beams, which are used for experiment. So this occurs at high energy. For me, high energy goes from intermediate energies of 100 MeV per nucleon to JeVs per nucleon. This is an in-flight separation. This is a quick process. The secondary beam has similar velocity to the primary stable beam, and very shortly radioactive nuclei can produce. This is the main method used by most of the big laboratories, GSI, uh, RICAN, IBF, GANIL, MSU, NSCL, also in FRIB and also in FAIR. Another method which produces more low energy beams is a very high energy accelerator at CERN. These are uh, proton beams of JV, uh, stops in a very thick and very hot target. And then the target nuclei are uh, broken. 
they are thermal, they are, they have thermal energies, they evaporate from the, from the target, and then they go into an ion source where they are ionized, then they are separated, and or you use a very low energy, around kV energy of a beam, as in Cernizolde, or you make a post-acceleration, and then you use it for experiment. But this is the method used to produce radioactive beams in Cernizolde, in Triumph, and FRIB will have the uh, projectile fragmentation, but also isol beams. These uh, need a high energy accelerator, and the target is broken, and the reacceleration produces low energy beams of longer half-lives. Because all this process takes a long time, so you cannot produce very exotic, very shortly radi radioactive nuclei. Well, large investments for new accelerator facilities are occurring now. One of them is FAIR in Germany. The peak of, of um, Klaus Peters was very complete. FRIB in USA, Spiral in France. Uh, this is already working, the RIBF, uh, Radioactive Ion Beam Factory in, in Rike and Japan. There is a very large investment, $1 billion in South Korea to produce a radioactive ion beam, um, a very large uh, laboratory, HIF in China, etc. All these new accelerator facilities will have radioactive ion beams, RIB. Or they use a projectile fragmentation on thin target. So they will produce high energy, uh, relatively high energy radioactive ion beams from 200 to 2.7 JV for uranium beams. A large variety of, of uh, radioactive ion beams can be produced, becoming truly exotic. Very neutron rich nuclei will be produced. And these are in, in very important for the R process studies in nuclear astrophysics. And there is a large increase in beam intensities foreseen. At least two orders of magnitude larger beam intensities as until now. Some will have also low energy beams stopping and reaccelerating using the ISOL method. However, low energy radioactive ion beams also have interest for nuclear spectroscopy, for mass and radius measurements, to measurements of fusion below the Coulomb barrier, nuclear astrophysics, etc. Uh, when we produce them by high energy accelerators, we have to decelerate and stop and reaccelerate. Low energy accelerators can also produce radioactive beams using transfer reactions, fusion, fission, or fragmentation. And this is what I will speak in my talk. It, at the University of Sao Paulo, we have a facility which is called Radioactive Ion Beam in Brazil. The acronym is RIBRAS. There are others around the world. At Notre Dame University, the twin so double solenoid, which is a brother, an older brother of RIBRAS, at Florida State University, at Argon National Laboratory, and others. Well, RIBRAS uh, was installed in 2004. This is the first radioactive ion beam facility in the Southern Hemisphere. And it consists of su two superconducting solenoids. So the stable beam accelerated by a tandem accelerator comes from the left. Here is a little chamber where is the production target, and the radioactive beams are produced by transfer reactions. Then the first solenoid, uh, there is a warm bore, and here is the, the, the beam line inside the, the cryostat. It uh, focalizes all particles with the same magnetic rigidity in this chamber. Uh, so we don't have a clean beam here. We have different beams with the same radioactive, uh, with the same magnetic rigidity. 
Now we have a big chamber installed after the second solenoid, and we can also produce pure beams here. I will explain how. Here I show the evolution of the Ribra system. In 2004, we did not have anything after the first solenoid. We were using only the first solenoid, and we were using cocktail beams in the central chamber. In 2011, we installed the big chamber, and now uh, uh, from this date, we have purified beams here. And now we have a big neutron detector close, which we begin to use in the near future, and we have a new chamber after the second, uh, after this big chamber for gamma detectors. This is from 2015. So there is an evolution. Uh, just a little bit of marketing. We have a review article in European Physical Journal published in 2014, and this spectrum, which is the cover of the of the uh, journal is a spectrum obtained at Ribra. Well, uh, our superconducting solenoid here is immersed in liquid helium in a cryostat. Around is another cryostat with liquid nitrogen. The fabricants are cryomagnetics in the US. It's a very well-built uh, um, system which has a boil-off rate of liquid helium of 3.4 liters per day. So we can use for one or two months without putting more helium-6 in the cryostat. Here are details of the production target. This production target is in this little chamber. It can be a solid foil of beryllium-9 or lithium fluorate or gas target. And then we have a tungsten cylinder which stops the primary beam. And uh, then the particles which were produced here are entering into the solenoid, passing through a collimator. We have an angular acceptance between 2 and 6 degrees. Well, the principle of the selection is by B rho. The maximum B rho we have is 1.8 tesla meter. And here we have a, a mixture of different beams. For instance, here is helium-6, helium-4, lithium-7, and light particles. Or lithium-8, alpha, helium-6, and some light particles. Helium-6 has only 16% of, of the whole intensity transmitted. It, lithium-8 has 65. When we use uh, the two solenoids in crossover mode, we can purify the beam. We put here in the chamber between the two solenoids a degrader, which is a thin foil. And the energy loss in the degrader depends on the z-square of the particle. So different particles, different uh, identities, we lose different energy amount, and the B rho will not be the same. So in this way, we can have beam here of lithium-8 of 99% of purity, and helium-6 of 92% of purity. And then in this chamber, which is much larger, we can put more detectors, larger detectors, and make a good evolution in the detection capacity. Here are the beams that we are producing. Here are the secondary ions. And here are the transfer reactions. And here are the intensities. So we have helium-6, which is the two-neutron halo nucleus, Lithium-8, beryllium-7, beryllium-10, boron-8, which is a proton halo nucleus, boron-12, fluor, and so on. And our intensities are between 10 to the 6 particles per second for lithium-8. This is the most intense, down to 10 to the 4 or even 10 to the 3. Well, the scientific interest at Ribras is the study of nuclear reactions 
with weakly bound cluster structure, low energy light radioactive ion beams. We measured using the, only the first solenoid all these elastic scattering measurements. We published a lot of paper in the last 14 years. And we, using the first, so, uh, the, the two solenoids, we measured lithium plus, lithium eight plus proton and helium six plus proton. These are inverse uh, kinematic reactions. And we also measure transfer reactions. I just want to show you not only our measurements, but other measurements to show what is the state of the art in this area. This was published in FISREV letters in 2012. This is the elastic scattering of lithium-11 and lithium-9 on lead. This is the cross-section, the differential cross-section of the elastic scattering divided by the Rutherford cross-section as a function of the angle and at two energies. And you see these are low energies. This was measured at Triumph because you need high energy to produce lithium-11. But our lithium-6 produced at low energy has the same properties as the lithium-11 because our helium-6 also has a core and two neutrons, two neutron halos. So we can do very similar experiments to this. Uh, this is um, lithium-9, where the cross-section below the Coulomb barrier is uh, e equal to the Rutherford cross-section. And lithium-11 has a very different behavior. It has a, a very strong drop, and then it does not change anymore. Here is lithium-9 for a little bit higher energy, and here is lithium-11. So the elastic scattering is very much affected by the breakup. The coupling to the breakup of lithium-11 states, which are states in the continuum, explain the strong reduction in cross-section. This calculation, this violet line, is a CDCC calculation, which is a code uh, continuum discretized coupled channels. So the continuum is discretized in energy bins and uh, one calculates the cross-section. These are measurements, unfortunately, yet with not so good statistics, uh, of the helium-6 in on tin-120. Helium-6 is a two-neutron halo nucleus. This should be, the blue points should be the cross-section without any coupling to the breakup. And the measured cross-section is these points, which are perfectly well explained uh, by the CDCC calculation. Just to, to attract your attention, the CDCC calculation is not a fit. It's not like an optical model calculation. You have no free parameters, because you describe the interaction of helium-6 with the target as using well-known potentials of alpha particle with tin and neutron with tin. And then you build the transition probabilities and you calculate the cross-section. So there are no free parameters in these calculations. CDCC calculation. Uh, well, there are several groups who are doing. This was done. We have a collaboration with Sevilla. There is a group, and they are able to do four-body CDCC calculations. Because if you have two neutrons, you need to take into account that the two neutrons are independent. So in the projectile, you have already three body, the core, the two neutrons, and the target. And I will show you there is a difference between three-body calculation when you suppose a dineutron plus a core, or when you suppose a free dynamic for each of the neutrons. These are our measurements published in 2014 in physics letters. And if you see, this is the elastic scattering of helium-6 on nickel-58. And here you see the data. And here you see two calculations compared. The 
red one is a four-body CDCC, and the blue one is a three-body CDCC. In the three-body CDCC, you suppose that the two neutrons form a dineutron. So there is a clear difference, and these, again, without any free parameter, reproduces perfectly the, the data. And these are measurements in Ribras. Well, now this is something very important which I want to speak, because this will be our future. This means, until now, these measurements were inclusive measurement. But recently, and there are very few data, people are beginning to measure at low energies uh, elastic scattering, uh, inelastic scattering, and breakup reaction uh, for halo nuclei. This is a one neutron halo nucleus, beryllium 11, on gold. And what you see that in order to, to reproduce the data, you need not only four bodies, uh, no, here is only three body CDCC because beryllium is a two body uh, system, but you also have to take into account the excitation of the beryllium-10 core during the reaction. So it is called XCDCC. And this is necessary to reproduce all data. What is important, this was published last year in FISREV letters. So this is also something, this is state of the art. Exclusive measurements means that one is measuring in coincidence the particles that come out from the breakup of the radioactive projectile and the scattered nucleus. You measure uh, coincidence between the elastic scattering and the breakup. And this is exactly which is our future. So our future plans at Ribras for nuclear reactions increase the detection capability for charged particles and gamma rays at Ribras and perform exclusive measurements coincidence between the clusters emitted in breakup and the scattered particle, or measure the breakup in coincidence with gamma rays. Uh, well, this is something which I also wanted to present. I don't know how many, how much time I have time. Okay. Uh, because one knows that the total reaction cross-section can be calculated from the elastic scattering, integrating this difference in the angular region. And this information is useful to investigate the role of breakup or other reactions for weakly bound systems. Uh, to compare the total reaction cross-section of systems with different projectiles and targets, including halo nuclei, you have to reduce the energy and the reaction cross-section to remove geometrical differences arising from sizes and from charges. This was published by Paolo Gomez in 2005. And then I show you some systematics of total reaction cross-section for targets around 120, uh, a, around 120. This is the reduced energy, and this is the reduced total reaction cross-section. And what you see, that the strongly bound projectile, like oxygen-16, presents, and here is alpha particles, these are a tightly bound projectile, has a lower uh, total reaction cross-section than these uh, yellow triangles, which are lithium-7, lithium-6. These are weakly bound stable nuclei. And the exotic nuclei, which is the helium-6, have an even higher total reaction cross-section. Well, this is for heavy targets. For targets with mass around 60, here are many, many data, ours and from other uh, laboratories. This is the tightly bound, this is the weakly bound stable, and these are the radioactive exotic nuclei and you see a real enhancement in the total reaction cross-section when you go to uh, radioactive particles. Now, 
it's a funny uh, effect which appears around A uh, equal to 27, which is an aluminum target. These are our measurements, and there is no enhancement at all. And for lighter targets, there is some enhancement, which is clear for beryllium-9 target. So what we can conclude, but this point has to be really remeasured and, and verified, that the, inc the enhancement when you have helium-6, which is a halo nucleus, compared to lithium-6, which is a normal same mass nucleus, is uh, for, low for low masses there is enhancement, there is a drop, and then again an increase. Uh, I will show some results with purified radioactive beams. Uh, we measured uh, resonance scattering and transfer reactions on a hydrogen target. Well, what we measured was a lithium-8 beam hitting a proton target and measuring different channels, the elastic scattering, the pickup, and the stripping reaction. Uh, it has interest from the point of view of nuclear physics because it gives spectroscopic information on beryllium-9 states near the lithium-8 plus proton threshold. And it is very interesting because at a very high excitation energy, we find resonances with very simple structures. From the point of view of astrophysics, there is also some interest because there is a way using lithium-8 to go to higher mass particles, cross the, the region where there is no stable nuclei, the Z equal four, uh, going from three to five. Uh, but this would produce the higher mass, and this would destroy the lithium-8. We have published in 2012 a paper where we measured only the P-alpha reaction. This is an interesting method, which is called stick target inverse kinematics. You have inverse kinematics because you want to use the protons of a polyethylene foil, which is CH2, and you come with the lithium-8 beam. But it's, su it's such a thick target that the beam stops in the target. So you have the reaction occurring at all energies from zero to the maximum energy. So you measure at the same time a whole excitation function. And when you have a resonance in this excitation function, you produce more light particles. And when you measure the light particles here in a silicon telescope at a very forward angle, you will have peaks in the energy spectrum of the alphas, of the protons, of the neutrons. So this is a very clever, interesting measurement to measure excitation functions for resonant reactions in inverse kinematics. Here are our data. Here are the protons, the deutrons, the tritons, and here are the alphas. This is delta E against totally alpha, triton, neutron, proton. And here are a small piece of our excitation function, just to show the region of a resonance. Here in the PP, in the elastic scattering, you have a minimum, a large minimum, around 1.65 center of mass energy. In the P-alpha, you have a maximum at the same energy. And in the PD, you have two peaks. So this is very interesting, because you don't see two peaks here, neither here. But these two peaks means that you are also exciting the seven lithium. One corresponds to the ground state and the other to the excited state of seven lithium. We performed R matrix calculations. If you have several, we, measure, we, we use five channels in the calculations. One channel is the elastic channel, eight lithium plus proton, and the incoming channel. The other is the five helium plus alpha. 
the excited 5 helium plus alpha, 7 lithium in the ground state, and 7 lithium excited state plus deuteron. And these red parameters are always the same for these different reactions. So this makes a strong constraint on the parameters. We can obtain a reasonable fit of the data using these parameters, and this allows to determine that there are two resonances in this region which are overlapping. You cannot see them separated because they, the, the width is larger than the separation in energy. Uh, and we, one can determine the partial widths of decay, proton, alpha, deuteron, and deuteron going to the excited state. This was just recently published in PhysFC. Well, our conclusions. A low energy light radioactive beam facility as Ribras can make competitive, can make competitive contribution nuclear reaction studies. Ribras has two neutron halo beam and one proton halo beam. But we need money for constant upgrade in electronics and detection capacity to be able to perform exclusive measurements. There are still very few data since they demand long measurement times. And Ribras has the advantage of beam time availability. Well, I finish. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And so the first pair. So what would be the impurity of the Brazil future? What would be possibilities to feedback, to collaborate? Well, uh, Tom Alman is a good friend. He comes very often to Brazil for conferences. He will come to our symposium. And he is the head of the New Star collaboration. Uh, the New Star project, and uh, we are in, in collaboration. We are in this New Star project. Uh, for sure, uh, this, this is a possibility, and we will uh, uh, try to use the, the facility that FAIR will have disp uh, available. Yes, complementary. Because to a certain point, they are also interested in our low energy beams. For instance, I was proposing a fusion measurement below the Coulomb barrier, because there, I did not speak about this, but there is still not cl clear or if the breakup increases the cross-section or reduces the cross-section. There are challenging and contradictory results and very few data. And I was asking Tom, uh, if he could help me to make a target in, uh, at, at GSI. And uh, he said, oh, I'm very interested in the measurement. I want to come to Sao Paulo to make this measurement. So we can contribute really in the low energy uh, part. And of course, what is the main limitation of a low energy uh, accelerator? I did not say this. With a low energy accelerator, you can produce a very reduced number of radioactive beams. And with these, you can make interesting things. But you are not able to go to higher mass and very uh, exotic beams, which you need high energy accelerators to produce. So if I wanted to go, I don't know, a very neutron rich, heavy projectile, this can only be done by this. At this uh, so there is certainly. Uh, interest in our part to use fair in the in the future. I give you the mic. 
No, it's a really a uh, trivial, maybe trivial question. You mentioned about the radius change of the nucleus in the uh, neutron rich, and you also mentioned the cross section, total cross section also increases. For the, and uh, they are actually related geometrically, or how do you define the, uh, the uh, uh, radius of matter, not the charge? How do you, how do you measure the radius? How do, how do you say, how do you define the radius? Oh, that's from this. So it's like, uh, okay. Fine. Yes. So even from the total reaction cross section, Rubens, maybe if you speak about this, you can determine uh, radii of of, uh, of nuclei, and they are uh, uh, quite quite good numbers. Usually, they use at this measurement was at at, at very high energy, but uh, and they use a kind of transmission method. Uh, you have uh, a certain number of incident particles, and then all those who suffered reaction uh, are deviated from the beam, and you have the transmitted. And when you make the difference of the two, this is a simplified uh, picture of the, of the method, but uh, in some way, this is the way. Yes. Yes? I have to go. Okay, so just understand uh, very. If you understand well, so you produce an ion beam and in order to analyze some target, right? So, but I suppose that uh, for in order to understand some very specific properties of the target, you need a specific ion beam, right? If you change, for example, the ion beam, you can change. So, but how do you know that uh, in order to uh, a specific property of the target, you need to you you know the 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 ion beam, you need to 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 to, to analyze this property? Then the my question. Uh, I did not understand. Okay, uh, <laughs> how do you know that for in order to analyze a specific property of the target? Uh, how do you know the ion beam? Because if you change the uh, ion beam, it maybe it's not good to, under to, to understand some property. Uh, look, uh, we can identify the, 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 the radioactive ion beam because we, we have this uh, silicon telescope detector and then you measure the energy loss in a first detector and the energy loss goes with z squared, and you measure, and then in a second SIG detector, it stops. So you measure the total energy and the energy loss. And from these two parameters, you can determine the z of the particle and the mass of the particle. So we, we know exactly what particle we are detecting and the total energy of this particle. Did I answer your question? Okay. <laughs> you, you have seen, uh, this was this plot where I showed protons, neutrons, tritons, and alphas. The separation between z equal two, which is the alpha particle, and the z equal one is much larger because this goes with z squared, and z equal one, but different mass are also separated. Proton, neutron, triton. Mass one, two, three. Is there any other question? Open comments? Oh, Tobias. Uh, Kalison. Kalison. Acorda. <laughs> um, Maybe it's more general, my question. Uh, I mean, in FAIR, they will have antiprotons and also, as I understand, exotic nuclei. No? I mean, maybe helium-6 or... Do you think the collisions between antiprotons and helium-6 could be interesting 
to give uh, some further information. Well, you told me that there are uh, plans to measure the skin, the neutral skin, skin. Yes, but not the halo, as far I understand. Yes, I, I well, uh, I never heard about this kind of plans, but, but uh, maybe, I don't know. I really don't know. I, <laughs> Ah. <laughs> yeah. Theoretical curiosity. Well, they sh you should put them in a storage ring. One side come the antiprotons, the other side come the radioactive nuclei, and they. You you will have many storage rings there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, but the superfragment separator is a uh, is a. Ah. Is Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Any other questions? I, I have a question that's really to the last talk. Actually, I forget to ask you this, uh, Takeshi. Uh, when you showed us the budget, so the federal state of Rio de Janeiro didn't pay its contribution yet, but you said there's a chance. But say for future programs, is there, uh, you know, you want to renew this or continue? Is there? Would you include other states? Would you, for instance, make an application to FAPES also? Would you involve other states to stabilize the the budget? <laughs> this is one of the, uh, <clears throat> the subject that we have been discussing in inside the ENCT program, and uh, the but uh, the the state budget. Uh, they have very strict uh, rules that they cannot apply the money to the other people or out of the state. Otherwise, any activity only in, happen in uh, each state. Or, so uh, technically, it's very difficult. And uh, we are trying at least uh, the uh, scholarship. Maybe we can introduce, how do you say, the exchange of uh, a budget with other states. But it's uh, technically not possible at this moment. Okay. Are there any other questions to the last two speakers? So let's thank first again the Linke for this nice presentation of Radio Beans. Thank all the speakers of this morning. And uh, for the practical part, of smoke as well. He works here. <laughs> now, I think you got in your package instruction where to go to eat, right? It should be, you can grab some Brazilian and it can take you there. And, uh, <laughs> I think maybe we should organize a caravan. Yeah. Now you, you probably leave, it, leave them here. You can leave it in my office or there at the office. Students, no, no. Students don't need here. They come only to work. <laughs> <laughs> they only work.